Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be telling you what a centroid of area is, and I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the centroid of an area for a fairly simple object. So let's first consider this triangular metal plate just here, and let's find the coordinates of its centroid C. Well, we know it'll have an X coordinate of X bar, and it will have a Y coordinate of Y bar. By the way, a lot of engineering textbooks stick to this convention of X bar and Y bar, so I will too. We know that we can describe x bar using the equation x bar is going to be the integral of xc dA all divided by the integral dA. Likewise, we know y bar can be described using the equation the integral of yc dA all divided by the integral dA. Right? Notice that we've got a few terms in here which we're not too familiar with yet. We've got dA and we've got xc and we've got yc. Let me explain what they mean. But first, let me clear up this picture so it's not so cluttered. This C is going to be the point X bar, Y bar. So let me just get rid of this. Now let's consider what our small element of area, dA, is. It's, it's a little bit of a trick question because there are several different elements of area we can choose. We could, if we wanted to, have chosen just a rectangular slice of area just here, which would have a base of dx and a height of dy. We can totally choose that as dA if we wanted to. Likewise, we could have chosen this value of dA being a long vertical strip. That could be dA if we wanted to. Likewise, you could choose this. There are many different ways you can evaluate dA, and it's completely up to you how you want to approach this problem. I think it's easiest to choose dA as being this long vertical strip just here, and I think you might agree with me based off how I solve this problem. So this is what I'm going to choose to evaluate as dA. It will have a base of dx and will have a height of y. That's because this point just here is the point x comma y. It's some point x and y along our line. Okay. Now let's see if we can find out the area of our element. dA is going to be the area of this rectangle, which is going to be y, our height, times by our base, dx. Okay. Hopefully, I haven't. Hopefully, I haven't lost you here. Let's. It gets a little bit harder though because I'm going to say that x c is going to be equal to your horizontal distance. Distance from your axis to your center of d a. Of d a. Now, so in this particular case, x c is going to be the distance from here to your center of your area, dA, which is here. It's the horizontal distance, so it's going to be right along here. This is going to be uh, xc, and it's going to be right along here. This will be xc. Let me clean that up a little bit. This will be xc. Okay. Now yc, very similar, is going to be the vertical distance from your axis to your center of your small element of area dA. So work with me, this will be the value of dA of yc. It will be from here to yc to here. And it will have a height corresponding to this red dot just here, which I've drawn. So these are the values of xc and yc. I know that's a little bit slanted, but that should be um, horizontal. That means that xc xc is going to be equal to x in this particular example for the value of dA that I've chosen. And yc is going to be equal to y on 2. Right? Notice that it's not y, it's y on 2. That's because this red dot is halfway through this strip. We're not completely done. We still need another equation to relate x and y to each other. And to do that, we need to find the equation of this line, which as we know from year 5 maths is going to be y is equal to mx plus b. Now also, we know that the gradient of any slope is going to be your rise over run. So that's going to be a over b. And we're timesing it by x. Notice b is equal to 0 because this thing has no y-intercept. Well, its intercept is 0. OK, we're now ready to start solving for this. Let's first find out the x bar. That is your coordinate of your centroid in the x direction. That's going to be equal to x. Notice we're substituting xc for x times by dA, which is going to be equal to y dx. Now let's work on your denominator. That's going to be your integral of dA, which is going to be y d 
dx. Now let's talk about what our limits of integration are. Just imagine this vertical slice as being a slider swooping out all the possible areas of your triangle. If you're the slider, you'd go from 0 all the way to b, right? So that means you're integrating from 0 to b, 0 to b. I always like that um, visual method of figuring out the limits. Um, I, to me, that I find that the easiest way. Okay, well, now that we um, know the limits, let's actually work on the integration now. We know this will be the integral of x times by y, which is a on b times x. a on b times by x dx. Likewise, the denominator can be written as the integral of y, which is a on b x dx. Also with limits from 0 to b, 0 to b. We notice there's a few cancellations. a and b are constant, so they can factor out and cancel each other off leaving us with the solution, the integral of x squared dx from 0 to b all over the integral of x dx from 0 to b. And I'm skipping a few steps, but that can be evaluated into x cubed on 3 with limits from 0 to b all divided by x squared on 2 with limits from 0 to b. And let me write it over here. That'll be b cubed on 3 times by 2 on b squared, and that's going to be equal to 2 thirds b. That is your answer. That is your answer for x bar. This right here, x bar, is going to be 2 thirds b. I hope that makes sense. Now that we've figured out x bar, let's see if we can find out what y bar is. It's going to be a very, very similar approach. Before I get started on doing this, though, I want to talk about the denominator of this. Notice it's just the integral of dA. This should be shouting off alarm bells at you now, because the integral of dA is simply just your total area of your object. We could have done it for this one as well. That's your total area. Which, for simple objects like this, you, there's no need to use the integration. We just know the area of a triangle is going to be a half base times height. So that's going to be a half times by your base, which is b, times by your height, which is a. That's going to be your denominator. It's the total area of your object, right? So we can, we can simplify in a few steps. We can write the numerator as yc, which is y on 2, times by dA, which is going to be y dx. And your denominator, no need to evaluate the integral. We just know it's going to be a half base times height, which is a half ba. Now we can rewrite this further, noticing that the halves and the halves here can be grouped, which shows that it's going to be, uh, it cancels out to 1 actually, so that'll be the integral 1 over ba times by the integral of y squared dx. We can evaluate this a little bit further, making the substitution for y squared, that's 1 on ba times by uh, a on b, a on b squared times by x squared dx. Let's, I, I, haven't, I haven't talked about the um, limits, but for the exact same reasons, the limits are from 0 to b. Exact same reasons as before. So we can evaluate this a little bit further, noticing that this is a constant, and write this as a squared on b cubed a times by x squared evaluated, which is going to be x cubed on 3 with limits from 0 to b. I hope you're following me. There's a lot of... Um, integrational steps here, but hopefully that's just trivial for you. We know that this evaluated will turn into b cubed on 3, which will cancel off nicely with this. And notice that the a squared cancels off with the a, so we're left with 1 third a. That is our value of y bar. This right here is the value of y bar. It's going to be 1 third a which I hope is completely in line with your intuition. This shows that the center of mass is further to the bottom right of this corner. I hope that makes sense. Now, before I end this video, let me talk about a few different other values we could have chosen for dA. I chose a vertical strip, although if you wanted to, you could have chosen a horizontal strip. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to start you off with this problem, but I'm going to let you finish it for your own sake. This right here is going to be your vertical strip. It will be of a height dy, but what will its length be? Notice this is its center just here. If we wanted to find out xc, remember, it's this distance from here to here to here, right? That's going to be xc. What is that? 
Remember, this point here is x comma y, which means that it's going to be the average between these two final values. xc is going to be equal to b plus x divided by 2. It's the average of these two final values. yc is going to be slightly easier to evaluate. It's just going to be equal to y, right? So I hope this is an example for how you could solve this problem a different way. I'll leave it up to you to approach this, but for now, I think you should be quite satisfied with how to find the geometric centers of area.